hi guys uh, today i am made a video on the concept of parametric rolling and encounter period uh, this was requested by one of the subscribers mm, so i thought i'd make this video i am not an expert in this video i think you should probably consult uh, naval architects who are uh, experts in this topic i'll just explain it simply as mariners should understand or seafarers should understand and if you need more knowledge please feel free to go and search up on this topic and learn more all right so let me start with uh, the concept of uh, parametric rolling and encounter period uh, and before i start uh, this concept is more profound for bigger ships these days uh, you can you know as ships are getting bigger and bigger and bigger the ships they are having larger bow flares and wider beams uh, to decrease the friction resistance uh, so as the these ships or the longer the ships the more profound is the effect as the ships meet the waves now the waves are being shown in the blue color and this is of course uh, the ship here if you didn't understand that this is a ship uh, as the ship meets waves uh, the wave crest travels along the hull as you can see in figure 2 uh, this is figure 2 you can see in figure 2 they travel along the hull and it results in the uh, flare of the ship being immersed in the crest of the wave which is the higher point of the wave this is the crest and of course the lower point of the wave uh, is the trough of the wave so as the vessel rides the crest it, the flare initially goes up the bow goes up and then uh, the bow goes down as you can see right in figure 3 now this results in the uh, rolling and the pitching of the vessel and now higher the wave uh, higher is the wave height more will be this uh, simultaneous rolling and pitching and now as the wave as the ship rides the wave as you can see in above figure the force of buoyancy uh, also acts on the vessel right the force of the buoyancy also acts on the vessel and so does these uh, wave forces the hydrodynamic forces so a combination of these wave forces and the uh, buoyancy sorry about that buoyancy uh, leads to the bow going up and then bow going down in the next wave cycle as the vessel rides the wave now this kind of synchronous motion which leads to heavy rolling up to 30 degrees in a few cycles is known as parametric rolling all right now this is of course uh, like i said the effect is more profound it is more significant with waves of uh, higher height uh, and uh, we'll talk about a little bit about those waves as well when i say waves of higher height i mean waves of uh, height which are greater than uh, the significant wave height i'll explain what significant wave height is as well because as uh, the ship encounters these uh, enormous waves uh, or uh, waves which are higher than the significant wave height this effect will be pronounced now of course the ship doesn't uh, meet this every now and then and that's why this kind of effect is uh, more pronounced when the vessel is either uh, i can explain this here either the seas it's meeting the seas head on so the seas are coming from the front direction this is a head-on encounter of the waves or it may also do so if the waves are directly astern or rather acting on the quarter in such a way which leads to the rolling and pitching so that is when uh, this pronounced period the period of roll becomes more so these are the there are two pitch cycles then maximum and minimum when the vessel goes up and the vessel goes down so the period of roll is half the natural rolling period uh, which coincides with the largest uh, phase angle and the maximum roll always occurs when the ship is pitching down that is when the bow is down um, and now like um, i told you guys before uh, i tried to explain this simply as simple as i can in simple words and phrases so the effects of parametric rolling is the maximum uh, as uh, the stresses are uh, stresses, stresses are set up in the ship structure especially in the forward and aft part so as you can see why because either the waves will be uh, acting uh, i'll use a different arrow here uh, the waves will be acting in the forward part that is when the parametric rolling starts or it starts acting here in the aft part uh, or aft quarter that is when the maximum effect so because of these extreme stresses uh, sometimes you can have structural failures as well and of course it is very unpleasant for the crew as the vessel goes up and down uh, pitching and rolling 
and uh, there is variation in the load of ship's engine the ship's engine also takes too much load that's why the uh, revolutions uh, the rpm of the engine is reduced and this happens in heavy seas especially and if you do not tackle it quickly uh, it can lead to capsizing of the vessel and i'll talk about what advice is given to the masters normally in such cases uh, you have to change the direction uh, in which the vessel encounters the waves and that is where we talk about the uh, encounter period as well all right so we'll keep going now and i'll show you what i mean by significant wave height and what else is there to learn uh, in parametric rolling and encounter period all right guys so i'm going to keep it simple like i said at the very beginning of the video and i was just telling you how uh, you will experience parametric rolling uh, with waves that you encounter at sea now sometimes you will experience abnormally large waves although its uh, probability of occurrence is very low but you may experience it all right it's not unheard of especially if you go towards the south coast of uh, africa uh, you will experience something called freak waves there or abnormally large waves uh, now the probability of encountering a wave which is larger than the significant height uh, increases as the total number of encounters increases now if you don't know what significant uh, wave height means now significant wave height uh, means that let's say you observe uh, heights of 100 number of waves as you can see in the graph here then you take the one third of the highest of those waves so 33.3 percent of the 100 waves that you observe and then one third of that height will give you the significant wave height. Now significant wave height uh, is often used to calculate the average wave height or the most probable wave height, uh, theoretically maximum wave height uh, by the formulas that you see on your screen. So the probability of encountering a wave that is larger than the significant height increases as the total number of encounter increases. For example, one in 2000 waves will be twice the significant wave height. Now the expected maximum height can be calculated from the number of encounters and the significant height as you can see in the formula on your screen. Now the formula here is that expected wave maximum height is equal to C multiplied by significant height divided by 1.414. Now C is of course a constant so is 1.414 and the values of C differ uh, differs for different significant heights and also uh, its probability of occurrence. We will not go too really deep into that otherwise it will get a bit boring for you and it's not very important for you to know all that. All right, now in practical terms if you uh, ask me then a vessel on a sheltered route uh, operating in a spectrum with a model period of 4 seconds might expect to encounter a wave of twice the significant height about once every two and a half hours and if you are in exposed sea conditions with a model period of 10 seconds uh, you might expect to encounter a wave of twice the significant height once in every about five and a half hours or so. Now these are of course uh, uh, not absolute figures. These are just average figures that I'm talking about. Uh, going further, I want to tell you that when vessel is sailing in adverse uh, sea conditions such as heavy wind induced waves or heavy sea swells, a ship is likely to encounter various kinds of dangerous phenomena which may lead to capsizing, or severe roll motions causing damage to cargo, equipment and persons on board. Now the sensitivity of a ship to dangerous phenomena will depend on the actual stability parameters, the hull geometry, the ship size and the ship speed. This implies that the vulnerability to dangerous responses including capsizing and its probability of occurrence in a particular sea state may differ for each. Now on ships which are equipped with an onboard computer for stability evaluations and which uses specially developed software which takes into account the main particulars actual stability and dynamic characteristics of the individual ship in the real voyage conditions uh, such software has to be approved by the flag state now that can be used uh, to calculate uh, the vessel's behavior under certain uh, wave conditions or under certain weather now waves should be observed regularly of course and in particular the wave period that is uh, TW denoted by TW should be measured by means of a stopwatch as the time span between the generation of a foam patch by a breaking wave and its reappearance after passing the wave. Now uh, we can talk about the uh, calculation of the wave period and the wavelength uh, but uh, there are formulas available there you don't have to go too much into that but you know that there is a there is a uh, graph here a figure that is uh, there in use which allows you to determine the period of encounter of waves. So here you can see that uh, there is a, the wave period is given in the center 
in seconds and the period of encountering of those waves is provided as well along with that uh, there is a very important value here alpha uh, the alpha here is stands for the angle between the vessel's keel direction and the wave direction so if alpha is 0 degrees that means the vessel is heading uh, to sea it is facing the sea so that is the importance of this figure and this figure can be used like i said to determine the period of encounter of waves uh, you can also do, use it to determine the wave period the wavelength uh, by the formula so you can calculate all that here as well now you may ask me that uh, when i say encounter period what do i mean by encounter period and uh, what do i mean by uh, you know uh, time period between waves and also waves are uh, waves are uh, observed uh, to see how the wave height and that is how you come up with the significant wave height right now what is encounter period is when the waves when the ship is encountering these large waves when the ship is going and encountering one large wave after the other large wave when i say large wave i mean uh, waves uh, that have height greater than significant wave height so this may be one large wave and then th there may be another large wave behind it and then another large wave behind it so this is one two and three right so the encounter period is when the vessel is encountering these waves one after the other so what is the time interval between each encounter of the waves so that is what, what i meant by encounter period uh, so that is my explanation of the encounter all right so um, i'll come back to understanding this concept uh, uh, as uh, i go uh, simply so like i said before uh, if the vessel uh, this is the vessel let's say right and it encounters the waves uh, head on all right so imagine this uh, wave lifting the vessel's bow uh, bows and the flare of the vessel and then or if the vessel is heading in such a way that uh, the bow or the wave is coming from a stern and it acts in such a way that it lifts the stern of the vessel uh, in a violent motion and which leads to slamming of the vessel this is when the uh, it's most dangerous so remember uh, again I'll, I'll draw the diagram here when the seas are coming in from the front in such a way or if the seas are coming in from a direct stern or the quarter which leads to the lifting of the vessel and slamming of the vessel now this is uh, this leads to encountering the waves uh, for a longer period uh, than when the waves are hitting from the beam direction all right so when the beam direction the encounter period is much lesser uh, than the stern direction so what happens then is then of course there are few uh, uh, dangers to the vessel that the vessel experiences now when the vessel let's say there is a steep wave right there's a steep wave and your vessel is right on the forefront of that wave right i should be using different colored pens so that you can distinguish uh, between um, uh, the uh, wave and the vessel so i'll try to explain this uh, simply as i can so when the vessel is riding on this big waves right like i've shown you before the significant wave height or heights waves which are greater than significant wave heights the concept of freak waves is also there although many mariners don't like to use freak waves anymore now this is the vessel right now when it is riding on a steep forefront of a high wave either when it is following or it is from the quarter or the aft the ship can be accelerated to ride on the wave so this is known as surf riding now this is known as surf riding when you know when when the ship comes down of this wave it's kind of accelerates it speeds up and that kind of speeding up is not good for the ship's engine now this situation is also called broaching to uh, phenomena which enders, endangers the ship and, and may lead to also capsizing as a sudden as a sudden result in the change of the ship's heading takes place and an unexpected large healing can takes place all right now also when a ship is riding on the wave crest the stability can be decreased substantially why because uh, as the force of buoyancy goes up uh, you know uh, it, the vessels uh, can come out of the waves or the water and uh, the underwater volume reduces now the underwater volume can reduce anywhere between the range of uh, 0.6 length to 2.3 uh, length of the vessel uh, so with this range the amount of stability reduction uh, stability is reduced stability is reduced so amount of stability reduction uh, is nearly proportional to the wave height 
when I say stability is reduced, the GM of the vessel can reduce, which is uh, unsafe for the vessel stability. And again, this happens with the following and the quartering seas or when the seas are right head on because it increases the uh, encounter period of the vessel with the waves. Uh, also, there are some things known as synchronous rolling motion. So these are large rolling motions may be excited no, to see the rolling motion. Of course, I, I would draw the vessel in a transverse form like this. Now you can see the vessel will start to roll. Now as this rolling motion starts to increase, it, it coincides with the encountering of the wave period. So in case of navigation in following seas or seas coming from the quarter, this may happen when the transfer stability of the ship is marginal, already very reduced and therefore the natural roll period becomes longer. Now parametric roll motions with large and dangerous roll amplitudes in waves that are due to the variation of stability between the position on the wave crest and the position on the wave trough. So if you didn't understand that, this basically means that uh, if the vessel is riding the wave right so if the vessel is riding the wave uh, as the vessel behaves differently in a crest and the same vessel will go down right and the same vessel will grow down go down and uh, here this is the trough of the vessel so you can see how in crest and trough the vessel's stability will differ from one position to the other in one the vessel is completely coming out the underwater volume is reducing the other the vessel is going deep down the bow is going down, the vessel is going down, the stern part of it is coming up. Uh, so the stability period uh, varies with the encounter period uh, that is about e equal to the roll period of the vessel. So about one to one ratio, right? So the stability attains a minimum once during each roll period. Now this situation is characterized by asymmetrical rolling. That is when the amplitude with the wave crest amidships is much greater than the amplitude to the other side. So one side of the rolling is more than the other side. So synchronous rolling is when the roll period is equal, when the roll period is equal. And asynchronous rolling is when the vessel is rolling and uh, one roll is more than the other roll. So unequal rolling, that is asynchronous rolling. Right, so the, due to the tensity, tendency of retarded up writing from the large amplitude the roll period may adapt to the encounter period to a certain extent so that this kind of parametric rolling may occur with a wide bandwidth of encounter periods now the stability varies with an encounter period uh, which is equal to half of the roll period so the stability attains a minimum twice during each roll period in following and quartering seas where the encounter period becomes larger than the wave period this may only occur with very large roll periods indicating a marginal intact stability so that is why so i will not go too deep into this um, otherwise it will become a bit boring so the dynamic behavior of a ship in following and quartering seas is very complex you know it's not it's very three-dimensional it's not as simply explained as i am explaining to you so all you have to know is when the vessel starts to uh, engage in asymmetrical rolling uh, the stability of the vessel is at danger uh, more danger right with symmetrical rolling because uh, there are times when the vessel's uh, uh, transverse GM uh, reduces twice and with uh, vessel slamming and pitching like you can see in the diagram here uh, then the long the, the longitudinal GM also goes up and down which is very dangerous and if the vessel is not righted or the writing moment of the vessel is not enough uh, that brings the vessel back to the upright condition then the vessel may capsize all right so of course the uh, there are other um, things as well to learn here but like i said uh, i have only explained this simply and trying to show you some diagrams and some figures some wave, uh, some uh, graphs maybe it will help you to understand it but i have my understanding of this topic is like a mariner only so uh, again it's very superficial it's on the surface level if you want to go really deep into this please make sure that you consult uh, people who are expert in this topic who are uh, naval architects or who have understood this topic more Alright, so let me know what you thought about this video. Thanks and bye.